So um, I want to present Donang Krisnanto. Uh, you are a PhD student, is that correct? At, yeah, just finished now. At, at ETH. Yeah, just yeah, also <laughs> at ETH Zurich and uh, doing his PhD he's been applying methods built in say the variation graph or pangenomics community to, to applications in, uh, in agricultural genomics, right? Yeah. Okay, th thank you and, and take it away. Yeah. Thank you very much for invitation for this, for this talk. So today I'm going to talk about my PhD project on establishing bovine pangenome graphs. My name is Danang, I'm doing my PhD at ETH Zurich and this is my Twitter handles. So my presentation will consist, we'll start from introduction and then I will continue with objectives and then it, I will next I will explain result and discussion and finally I will come up with conclusion and, and outlooks. So let's start. Reference genome are useful for many genomic analysis. For example, when we want to identify genetic variation, we always compare sequencing rates relative to what reference nucleotides. However, most of the reference genome was built from single or few individual. This also applies in organism, which I study, which is cattle, which is built from these single animals from Hereford cows. However, cattle population actually exhibit high genetic diversity due to large a past effective population size, which is higher than human, and because in time selections, for various uh, production traits, it differs into hundreds of subpopulations, or, or we will say it as breeds. Thus, it is clear that a single genome cannot sufficiently represent all of this complete species diversity, and this will cause bias because all of the comparison will always be relative to what the reference to what the nucleotide percent in the reference, which generally divided into two problems. First one, the first one, so-called soft reference bias, whereby if you map sequencing reads containing, uh, containing nucleotides differ from the reference, this might lead into lower alignment score that might lead into suboptimal mapping that result in unequal support, such as less support for alternate and more support for a reference allele at heterozygous sites or even misalignment. The second problem, so-called hard reference bias, that reference genome does not contain large structural variations that, that differs from reference animals. So that all of the downstream genomic analysis will not be able to assess genetic variation in these so-called missing segments. Then uh, on the other hand, genomic resources are currently generated at rapid rate. This includes sequence variations and also multiple genome assemblies. This led to development to the concept of pangenome. So the idea here is that instead of collapsing all variation into a single structures so, or single reference, they try to represent diversity as a reference. So the collection, sorry, so the collection of the genomes will contain core of genomes which present in all member of populations and disassembled genome which varies between individuals. And as, as, as we already know that genome graph has been used a lot to represent this allelic diversity in compact and coherent reference structures, for example, by collapsing regions without any difference into nodes and add variation as alternative nodes in the graph. So here in the red arrows and when we we can, we can retrieve the original input sequences by working throughout the graphs as shown here in, in, in the rest of slide. And there are two mainly genome graph implementation. The first one so-called variation graphs that is try to extend linear genome with small variation which are initially found from linear genomes. So we have three, we have single genome as big ones and add variation as, as new nodes in the graphs. And the second one, so-called multi-assembly graph, this try to induce graph representation from alignment of multiple genome assemblies. So that this graph theoretically will contain all type of variations and not limited by the ones initially from, found from linear genomes. 
And in this talk, I will, I will mostly talk, I will mostly discuss about the utility of this graph genome approach for sequence variant analysis in cattle populations. The first one, uh, I mainly will talk about variant genotyping from local graphs. And the part two, I will talk about construction of population specific and multi breeds or uh, pan genome graphs. And in part three, I'll try to talk about uh, constructing bovine multi assembly pan genome graph that, that integrate multiple genome assemblies. In the first part, I will talk about variant genotyping from region specific graphs. We use a graph paper software for this purpose and implement these pipelines, graph based pipeline discovery based on graph papers, and use pipe, these pipelines to genotype about 50 samples of genome sequence data from cattle. The graph paper pipeline itself consists of two different iterations. The first one, so called discovery pipeline, that we try to. So, this is similar like when we do uh, foreign calling from linear genomes that you align reads to a difference and call variation from the line reads. However, in the graph paper pipeline, they, we, we have to, to pass or refine and pass that you took variation discover in the first space and then construct focal graph with the size, with the size of around 10 KB. And then we realign reads into this local graph and then uh, genotype based on the refined alignment to these local graphs. And then using SNAP array genotype as the truth set, we can then compare the performance of this uh, pipeline with, com with, with commonly used tools, which are based on linear genomes. And this graph paper pipeline has the highest or superior performance in multiple metrics, including concordance and sensitivity. And interestingly, we see also improvement in uh, median consistency, particularly for indels. And the second part of this talk uh, is about construction of population specific and multi breed of genome graphs. So the idea here is that instead of using variation from the same cohort, we might be also be able to use variations or external variation which already been cataloged in public database. So for this purpose, we, we open this cattle reference with small variation or slip and indels that already been discovered from four European cattle breeds and this all using Fiji toolkit. And the next question is like, what kind of variations that we need to input into the graphs? And we assess some filtering criteria of variations based on the frequency and in which populations that these variations are getting. And then we assess the performance of graphs in multiple metrics, like in mapping, foreign genome mapping, in analytic balance. Next, I will talk about the foreign filtering part. So what we do here is that we create graphs where the variation augmented into graph filter based on the alert frequency on the populations. And then we map simulated rate from, from the same populations. As shown here in the figures, as we go into the left, left direction in X axis, means that we include more variations with lower alert frequency. The mapping accuracy increases as decreased by lower mapping error. Thus, um, that's the addition of more variations become make the graph become more informative. However, when we add when we start adding rare variations, the mapping accuracy actually decreases or not improve at all. So, so that this indicates that there are optimal number of variations that can be included into the graphs. And and when we look at the difference in uh, line with different color here, so we see differences in mapping accuracy across different population, even though we open the same number of variations. Shown here in the like in the green line is the has the highest mapping error, which is also population which has the highest uh, highest diversity compared with others. In the second part, I will talk about the read mapping to population specific versus genome or multi breed graphs. So what we do here is that we map this process population or BSW simulated reads to multiple graphs like population specific graphs where the alert frequency calculated based on this on, on these uh, populations and multi breeds or genome graphs where the alert frequency or the variation considered from combined from combined population combined 
samples in populations and a random crops where we only include variations from SNP database without any considerations. And then uh, we, when we compare the red box with the brown box, we seen that graph mapping with pre-selected variation, it always more accurate than linear mapping. And the most accurate mapping achieved with a population specific graph as, as expected. However, we also see that mapping to plant genome graph is almost as accurate as these population specific graphs indicating that the construction of a combined unified plant genome is possible that will be applicable to many populations. Next, instead of on, on simulated reads, we then go further into like on real, real data. So what we do here is that we, we use previously selected filtering criteria and construct this brown seed whole genome graph with 14 million preselected variations. And then we assess the, the graph performance on read mapping and genotyping on sample which are not used for graph constructions. So instead, in, in, in part of the read mapping, we see increase in more than, in more than 15% of reads which match perfectly toward the path in the graph without any difference. This indicates that the graph reference are no closer to the targeted populations than the original linear reference. And then when we look at the genotyping performance at the heterozygous sites, and we see here uh, the lower allele ratio, meaning that the more it bias to the reference. When we look at the when we look at the graph performance or in the green line, the allele ratio always close to half, meaning that both reference and alternate are equally supported across variant line. But when we look at uh, in, in linear mapping, the longer the variation, the more it bias toward, toward the reference allele, which is particularly evident in, in, in long insertions. And in, in the last part of my talk, I will talk about the establishing of co-fine multi-assembly graphs. So what we do here is that we, we try to induce graph representation from these six cattle assemblies, and we do this using Minigraph at, at that moment. So what Minigraph do is that we pick one reference as pick points of the graphs, and then we add, uh, add other assemblies toward these graphs based on the genetic distance toward these reference, reference assemblies shown here in figures. And all of these five assemblies uh, already available in public database, but we also generated uh, one assemblies, one cattle assembly using letters uh, accurate pack value data, and which, which yield the highest contiguity compared with other assembly, which is based on the old pack value technologies. And then what we want to do is that we, tr we try to we want to make use of this graph. First, we try to recover non-reference sequence, which are not present in the reference nucleotide from these multi-assembly graphs. But, uh, but at, at that stage, Minigraph does not track path information or assembly path information in the graph. So what we do is that we realign assembly back to the graphs and then we traverse the alignment and then we sort of label its nodes in the graph toward, toward these traversing alignments. And, and these sample labels in the graph facilitated us to extract structural variations. And then based on this uh, labeling, we could also discover uh, nodes which are not present in, uh, in the reference sequence or non-reference allele with total length of around 70 MB or 2.8% of the total genomes. And then based on this labeling, we could also explore how this uh, non-reference sequence shared. For example, most of this non-reference sequence actually discover privates toward the animal, which are, which are the most diverse from the reference animals. But we also found like this for, for, for MV sequence, which are present in all of assembly other than reference sequences, which might represent deletion specific in, in the reference animal reference samples. Then we ask further whether this non-reference sequence contain functionally active elements. So first what we do is that we, we ask whether it's how many repetitive elements in this non-reference sequence and most of them are 
more than three three quarter of it is actually repetitive elements, which left us around 16 MB of non-repetitive part. And then what we do is that we do computational prediction of disputative chains of on this 16 MB, and we validate this uh, putative chains with expression data. And we shown that many of these putative chains actually uh, segregated in multiple and multiple samples. And then we look at uh, we look at uh, the functional categorizations, classification of these putative genes. And these are mainly related to immune response, signaling, lipid, and protein metabolisms. Because we found abundant transcriptionally active elements, we, we then asked further whether it could also discover differentially expressed transcript from these one genomes. So for this purpose, we revisit analysis on the infection biology of mycobacterium. So what we do is that we, re, we, we do the transcriptome study on this non different sequence on, on infected and controlled cattle. So this, this study consists of uh, infected and controlled cattle, and we redo the transcriptome study using these this bunch genomes. So, when we look at only expression of this putative non ref genes that we discovered before, we, we could spare it infected from control cattle. This indicates that this expression of genes is actually informative. And we found around 36 of non reference genes are differentially expressed on here in the right part. And when we look at the top differential expressed gene, it's also related, it's related to localized receptor, which are not present in the different sequence. Uh, but it's present in pan genomes. So uh, this indicates that pan genome could make this kind of missing segments amenable for genomic investigations. And the last part is that I want to show that uh, we could detect variation in this non reference sequence and that they are biologically relevant. So we detected uh, around 50,000 SNP and Indel in this non reference sequence that segregated between and within breed, so near in the figures. And when we look at the effect of these mutations based on these previously predicted gene models, uh, we, we found more than thousands of variation effect coding sequences and many annotated with high impacts, which indicates that this might affect phenotypes. And then we also try to do some population genomic analysis using these uh, variations. And based on this variation, we could actually cluster animal by breeds, which indicates that these variations, this, this missing or nested variation might uh, contribute to genetic differentiation across animals. And finally, I will come up with conclusion. So, uh, my research basically try to apply these graph-based approaches in, in livestock and agricultural species like in cattle genomes. And possibly I could convince you that graph-based reference can be a public strategy to mitigate reference bias. I show example that it can lead into unbiased and accurate sequence variant discovery. And in case of this uh, graph that includes structural variation, it can make so far like neglected genetic variations amenable to genomic investigations. And, and the last part, I shown that pangenome graphs could contain abundant functional elements that currently not accessible in a single genome that potentially can uncover new biology. With that, I will end up my presentation. I will thank uh, Animal Genomics Group, particularly uh, Dr. Alexander Leonhardt, which I work a lot, and also uh, my supervisor, Professor Robert Paus. And this is my contact detail for me and my groups. Thank you very much. Thank you, Tanang, for, for the uh, amazing tour de force of applications of pangenomic methods. Very nice to see all this put together. And uh, so there's heavy rain here, so I can't talk very well. I'll, I'll gel the, the question. So, first, yeah. um, Jean Luc is interested in what the main characteristics of the bovine genomes that might have negatively affected the tools you use might be. Like, are there features in the in the bovine hand genome that are difficult to work with? Mm. 
yeah um this kind of thing so uh what i could say is it's like uh, bovine pine genomes they have usually have higher diversity than humans so we we, we need to try some settings in 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 the like i'm working now with not not related to this but i'm working with pggb and then we need to fine tones like the standard the settings because we have higher genetic diversity something like that yeah so it's not we cannot use like the default in all of all of the analysis that's yeah. very interesting it makes sense actually um and i guess the problem would be sort of exacerbated in hybrid cases where you have diverged yeah. progenitors of parents right yeah um, let me see if we have another question. Um, so I, I was curious how the SNP detection in the non-reference segments worked. How did you manage to, to do that? What was your technique? Yeah, so at this and that at that moment, we detected this non-reference sequence and then we add this into reference sequence. So so we add this sequence as sort of like additional context in, in the in the sequence. So we don't do like graph space parent calling at the states. So we do this uh, as additional context. The downside is that we detected a lot of like uh, like multi mapping reads, which need to be like considered very carefully. So yeah. So so we we add this as additional context into into the graphs, uh, no, into the reference sequence, and then we detect it with linear genomes approach like JTK. But we need to deal or consider carefully about these multi mapping reads. Yeah, that's that's, uh, that's the problem with this kind of uh, yeah. So, it, seems, it seems like the mini graph gives you these very large contexts, so it's it's amenable to this kind of approach, right? You want more blocks. Yeah, and, yeah, and yeah. Um, I, so I have a, another question. It's about the enrichment for different types of um, types of genes in the novel segments. Did yeah. I understand correctly that there were things related to immune response that you saw? Yeah. That, yeah. And yeah. I was curious if you could say a few more words about that because it's something that we're seeing um, was very clear, at least in the human pan genome graphs, that, that the regions with very complex structural variation are mm -hmm. often related to immune immune system, or both innate and and uh, and uh, like the yeah. Major, the level of yeah, we detected a lot of this non reference sequence in chromosome 23 and chromosome 18, at least in, in cattle genomes. Chromosome 23 is where this uh, bovine HLA located, and chromosome 18 is like where this leukocyte receptor is located. And, uh, and, and we detected uh, some of the leukocyte receptors not assembled correctly in the reference genomes, which they cannot be used for transcriptome studies. Like it's missed from transcriptome studies if you use only reference genomes. And when we detected this in pan genome graph, we could detect these leukocyte receptors expressions, like differentially expressed in, in control infected populations, like in infected populations. So yeah, I, I could say it's like in in regions related to HLA and leukocyte receptors based on my experiences. Very interesting. Um, so we have another minute, but I'm, I'm going to uh, yeah. profit and uh, and ask another question. So yeah. have you thought about doing genome-wide association studies or pan-genome-wide association studies on these uh, these kinds of models? Is that is that something you think is possible? Because you probably have nice phenotype data for some of these. You yeah. The number of individuals may not be very large in these. Yeah, 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 yeah. So is it something you're working on? This is something that we are currently pursuing with with Alex, and that we 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 try to do like this uh, mapping directly into the graphs, and then call genotypes directly from the graphs, in, and then use this genotype for association studies. That's work underway with. Also with Alex. Oh, that, okay, that's really exciting. We look forward to seeing yeah. and hearing thank more about it. Thank you very that. much. Great. Thank you. Thank you for the talk. Uh, thank yeah. you very much. Yeah. Um, so we have a few minutes till the next talk. Uh, I don't know. Um, actually, if there's any other questions, we have a moment.
it looks like yeah. it's quiet. So, okay, thank you very much. And yeah. we'll uh, no move to the next. Yeah.